Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you Savage and Ravage for Forge 1.19.2, which is a vanilla styled mod that improves and expands illager related features in Minecraft like structures, mobs and more. It changes raid mechanics, pillagers and includes some new creeper related features. Let's get started. The mod changes pillager outposts. They look different in the design and you might find a few chests with emeralds or new items there. Furthermore, there is a new creeper enclosure next to the building, containing creepers and creepies, that is watched over by a new mob called Griefer, which I will explain in detail later. Also, during raids you will encounter new strong opponents, which will make the fights more difficult and dangerous. The Iceologer is a new type of illager which will spawn in cold biomes. The mob has 20 health points and no armor. They attack you by freezing you, which won't do that much damage but slow you down. They will also drop large chunks of ice on top of you, which can deal 8 damage and freeze you as well if you don't dodge the falling rocks. Upon death, Iceologers sometimes drop the wand of freezing. This ranged weapon allows you to summon ice rocks above mobs, which will fall down on them after a few seconds, dealing 8 damage. You can also right click with the item on blocks, which will cause the ice rock to fall down immediately, instead of floating in the air for a few seconds. This allows you to predict the mob's movement and increase the chance of hitting it. Our next mob is the Trickster, which is another strong foe with 24 health and which will spawn in raids. The mob doesn't damage you, but can severely impact your ability to defend yourself in a fight. It uses two types of attacks. Firstly, it will apply a new effect to you, which is called Weight. This effect will slow you down and prevent you from jumping, so you can't really move anymore and are at the mercy of your opponents. The second one, the Confusion Bolt, is that the Trickster will swap places with you, while giving you blindness and weakness for a few seconds. After you've been teleported, you can't damage the mob for a short time, which the Trickster will use to run away again. Generally, the mob will try to keep its distance from you and use its abilities to prevent you from chasing it. When the mob has low HP and you shoot a projectile at it, it will activate a spell to teleport it to a random location nearby. It will also try to run away when it is on low HP. When you kill the trickster, it usually drops the totem of undying and emeralds, but sometimes it also drops the mask of dishonesty instead. When wearing this mask, you are able to turn completely invisible by sneaking. Even the item in your hand as well as your armor will be invisible, which makes this mask much stronger than an invisibility potion. The Executioner is a mob that has 35 health points, free armor and deals 12 damage, so it can kill you really quickly, even if you are wearing strong armor. It will spawn during raids. When this mob kills a player, the player head will be dropped. The mob is only capable of fighting in close combat and upon dying it can drop emeralds and its weapon, the cleaver of beheading. This large weapon deals 12 attack damage and has 0.6 attack speed. When killing a player with this weapon, the player head will be dropped. It also has a special attack you can use when you are not sprinting or jumping. The animation will swing downward, earthquake particles will appear on the ground and mobs in the area will be slowed down except for the mob you hit. This can be helpful to separate crowds of mobs and single individual targets out. The Skeleton Villager, which has a 5% chance to spawn instead of a skeleton, has 20 health points and will attack you using a crossbow, which deals 1 to 4 damage. It can also spawn in place of zombie villagers in abandoned villages. When killed, the Skeleton Villager can drop bones, arrows and a crossbow. Evokers are also changed by the mod. When killing them using projectiles, they will use a totem of undying, which will restore 2 health and gives them a projectile proof shield for 30 seconds. When their shield runs out, they can't use a totem for another 90 seconds. You can disable that mechanic in the configs. When killing an evoker, you can now obtain a conch of conjuring. When right clicking with this item in front of you, a long row of fangs will appear out of the ground, which will deal 6 damage. When right clicking directly below you, a circle of these fangs will appear around you. Sometimes pillagers will now spawn as firework pillagers. For their first bolt, they will shoot a firework instead of an arrow. Next, there is the griefer, which can spawn during raids and in pillager outposts. 
This mob has 25 health points and can spawn with no or up to 15 armor when wearing its complete armor set, which I will show you in detail later. The mob can damage you using melee attacks, which deal 5 damage, but it can also throw creeper spores at you. These creeper spores are similar to a lingering potion. They will create a small temporary area with green particles on the ground. In this area, a new type of mob called creepy will spawn a few times until the effect fades again. These mobs have 5 health points, will run after you and explode next to you like a normal creeper, but the damage will be lower than the damage of a normal creeper. They are smaller and faster than creepers, similar to baby zombies. And don't worry, when these guys explode, they won't destroy any blocks. Upon death, the griefer can drop gunpowder and creeper spores. You can obtain creeper spores also by killing a creeper with an explosion. Now you can throw these creeper spores yourself to use them in combat and summon a few creepies. These creepies are now friendly and will follow you. They will also charge towards any mob you hit yourself or any mob that attacks you. Then they will explode while standing next to that mob and damage or kill that mob in the process. And of course, they still won't destroy any blocks while doing that. You can also shoot creeper spores using a dispenser, but this will cause the creepies to be hostile to you as well. Furthermore, you are able to craft creeper spores into mischief arrows, which will spawn a friendly creepy at the position at which the arrow lands. So when using such an arrow, the mob will not only be damaged by the arrow itself, but will also be immediately attacked by the creepy which spawned in that moment. Another use for creeper spores are spore bombs. These blocks look and work like TNT. Craft one, place it down and light it up using a flint and steel. It will cause an explosion which will harm all nearby entities, but which will not destroy any blocks. You can change that in the configs if you want to. A field of green particles will appear in which new creepies will spawn. These creepies will attack any mob or player they see. So you can use spore bombs to fight hostile mobs or players, but watch out because these creepies will also attack you even if you place down the bomb and lit it up. Creeper spores can also be crafted into blast-proof platings. These platings can be used to make blast-proof plates, which are blocks that can't be destroyed by explosives like TNT or a creeper. They can also be used to craft a griefer armor. This armor gives you the same protection as iron armor, but has also 4 armor toughness as well as explosion reduction, which means that each piece of armor reduces the damage you take from an explosion, and when wearing the full armor set, you won't get any damage from explosions anymore. However, explosions will drastically reduce the armor's durability, so watch out for that. To solve this problem, you can enchant the armor with blast protection, so explosions actually regenerate the durability instead of reducing it. Note that there is an option in the configs that makes creeper spore clouds appear when a creeper explodes. There is also a config option that disables the destruction of blocks by creeper explosions, which is pretty similar to the vanilla game rule, which disables mob griefing by all mobs. The mod adds a few new building blocks called Lumi tiles. These blocks can be crafted using stone bricks and phantom membranes, and they can also be found in the pillager outposts. And especially in these outposts, you should take a closer look at them, because some of these blocks are special ruined gloomy tiles. When you step on this type of block, a fang will appear from the ground and damage you. You can make ruined gloomy tiles if a trickster's confusion bolt, so the attack that teleports you, hits a gloomy tile. Or if a trickster is standing on a gloomy tile block when it teleports away, because it's about to die. The second method will even transform all gloomy tiles in a big square around it. If ruined gloomy tiles are redstone powered, they will constantly glow. Additionally, they won't activate if you're walking over them while they're redstone powered. Another feature included in the mod is that now you are able to light up an ominous banner. It will burn for a few seconds and vanish afterwards. Normally that won't do anything, but you can enable a mechanic in the mod's configs that will make the bad omen not appear when killing a patrol leader, but when burning the ominous banner. That way you are able to control when raids will start. You can also set other banners on fire if you want to, even using a flint and steel in the dispenser, although no one will be given a bad omen if you burn down an ominous banner using a dispenser. You can put banners in your helmet slot to wear them like a pillage patrol leader, furthermore you can equip them using a dispenser. Note blocks are also affected by the mod. If you put a gloomy tile, target block or blast proof plates below a note block, it will change the note block's instrument, allowing you to create completely new music. There's also a small easter egg included. If you rename the trickster to based using a name tag, the mob will change its skin. 
Now, sometimes you can also watch pillagers train their aim with their crossbow by shooting at target blocks, which is a pretty cool detail. Just spy on them long enough and you will be able to watch them practicing. When hitting their target, you will hear a sound. That is because now, when a note block is placed above or next to a target block, every hit on the target block will make a sound. This covers all the information about the mod. I hope you enjoyed the mod showcase and that I could answer all of your questions. If you have any further questions, or if you would like me to showcase a particular mod in a future video, feel free to write a comment or join my Discord server. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you don't want to miss any further reviews, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.